All right, I'm going to try this again. Uh, Instagram keeps on uh, cutting me off, so I'm going to videotape this and then put it on Instagram and my YouTube page. So, I have had a few DMs regarding the fact that General does work off leash about 90% of the time and wanting to know the legalities of a service dog being off leash. Um, the winds and howls and you know so forth so a service dog is not completely immune from leash laws let's put that out there first if I end up in court for any reason I have to be able to prove that there was no other safe and effective way for both myself and general to be able to work with a leash on so uh, that is the reason why he is off leash because I have severe mobility issues um, during his first two and a half years of working he was leashed um, and I stepped on him and nearly lamed him every day that I left the house. If he was on a leash, I stepped on him. And um, even with a little bit longer of a leash, I, whenever I would fall, I was still a danger for him. So being off leash allows him to work slightly further away than a perfect heel. And it also allows him to monitor my balance and whenever he sees that I'm about to go down, he can jump away. Again, I range anywhere between 295 to 330 depending on what's going on with my health at the moment. I'm actually currently 310. I'm a big girl, there's no, there's no uh, way to go around that. So yeah, I'm, I admit I'm fat. Um, many uh, reasons does have to do with some of my different conditions. I was told years ago that I would never be able to lose weight, that the best I can do is to maintain. So, anyways, <laughs> all right. So, for other reasons that a service dog can be off leash, um, certain tasks like item retrieval. Yes, you can take the dog off leash for the dog to go get what you need, but whenever the dog gets what you need, the dog legally has to go back on the leash. Unless, again, the dog fall, uh, also falls under the safety for the handler, the, the dog, what forth. Um, See, so again, if I end up in court, I have to be able to prove that the hands-free leash is not a viable option. The... Uh, leashes that go over the shoulder um, obviously the flexi leashes are a big no-go they are unsafe for dogs in general uh, so I <laughs> that that's one of the products that definitely should be taken off the market because they are so unsafe um, especially since most people do not use them nor the majority of tools for dogs correctly um, now, some people list crowd control as a reason to be off leash. That was actually one of General's first tasks. Um, and he did it for over two years on a leash. Uh, he was trained to go around me in one direction. And then whenever he was done with that direction, he was trained to turn around and go in the other direction. So crowd control can be done on a leash. Hi, buddy. I'm just letting General and his best friend Diesel run around, have, have a little bit of playtime. But um, so yeah, while many people do train that off leash, it can be done on a leash. So it's one of those gray tasks on whether or not you can be off leash for all the time uh, again if you're having an active 
period of time where you need the dog to just you know completely circle around while you are stationary or something like that um that would be different than just constantly having the dog off leash for the random moment where you might need the dog off leash um and again it can be done on on a leash so if you end up in court you may or may not be able to use that as a viable reason for the dog to be off leash another thing is i made sure that general was fully out of puppy brain uh, many people don't really take into consideration that portion of their dog's training. Yes, a dog can be very well behaved, but whenever their brain is still developing, they're not 100% reliable to the extent where they really should be off leash. Uh, training, you know, and stuff like that along the way while they're still growing, that's great. But working them full time off leash really isn't something that a dog that's still growing mentally should do. Um, I waited, and since General is half German Shepherd, most large breeds take a little bit longer for their brains, not their bodies. Their bodies are usually fully developed about two years, two and a half. But their brains tend to wait until they're about three, three and a half. This is why ethical breeders will not breed their dogs until they are after three years of age. So General was three and a half years old before I started training him off leash. And to be honest, I wasn't ever planning on training him off leash. But there was an incident where I had to trust him off leash even though he was not uh, trained um, off leash at that moment. And he did great, and I realized this is very beneficial. So that was whenever we started the off-leash training. And then as my mobility has decreased, we have slowly increased the amount that he works off-leash to the point where now he is, like I said, 90%. Because we go to places like the zoo where there are certain places where he needs to be leashed like in the desert dome so that would take up the other 10 percent of the time um, places where he needs to be on a leash or um, like whenever I see other dogs that I'm not fully confident in I will put him on a leash for his safety because my mobility is less of a risk than the unknown factor of a potentially dangerous dog so those would be the 10 percent I will never consider him 100% because again, there will always be times where a leash needs to be at least on me in case something was to happen. Um, it, whenever I get my next dog that will obviously be a much bigger dog, it will um, have the pull straps and stuff like that. But pull straps, I really have some issue with some some of the handlers I see they use them as like a temporary leash as they walk past a gatekeeper and then the moment that they go past the gatekeeper they drop them and then they, they work their dogs completely off leash while they're still in puppy brain and that is um, a little problematic not just for that dog but other teams as well because again as a dog is still growing mentally it's really not safe and it's a little neglectful to completely just be like, I'm going to work you off leash today because I just don't want to hold the leash. Well, I'm sorry, but that excuse would not hold up in court if something was to happen. And that is something that all of us need to be aware of. Things may be more useful, but again, if we end up in court, the standard would be is there another option at all not one that is maybe a little less convenient convenience doesn't play into law so just like i am currently undergoing um the process of trying to get a mobility um, chair once i have a power chair sorry 
I got up and then I almost fell. Good thing a fence was here. Um, <laughs> uh, once I have a power chair, my mobility issues will no longer play into whether or not uh, General can be off leash when I'm in the chair. Now, obviously, whenever I'm up, having to transfer or some other uh, reason for actually being up on my feet, that's different. But whenever I would be in a scooter or power chair, legally he needs to be leashed because again my mobility issues that play a role in him being able to be off leash whenever i'm up walking around no longer come into play when i am sitting in a evc um and again one of his tasks is crowd control but he has been trained to do crowd control on a leash. So he will be able to do crowd control on a leash uh, once I am sitting in an EVC. So, um, yeah, I, that's probably it for right now. But, um, I just figured I would address those questions that came to me all at one time instead of trying to type out the same thing just to a couple of different people. Um, I know that some people may see this video and they might get offended because they do work their dog off leash all the time or most of the time or while their dog is still really young. Um, and they're going to want to come back at me saying, well, my dog is, okay. Yes, I don't know each individual person's dog, but just like with children, a child may ha be old and mature for their age, but that doesn't mean that they should still take on responsibilities of a child who's older. An eight-year-old child can pop in a microwave TV dinner and then eat it later on because mom or dad has uh, plans tonight, so they went ahead and, you know, told them that this TV dinner is your dinner. I know nowadays this would be completely taboo, but, you know, this is just hypothetical because when I grew up, you know, eight-year-olds babysat other younger children, okay? But we all know now that that is not good mentally and emotionally for that child well it is the same thing for a dog just because a dog can do something does not mean that they should do that something just like there are many uh, tasks that people may want to try to train their dogs for when they look old enough to do it but really they're not such as you know mobility putting any weight or hat using a guide handle that is that could potentially alter the way that their joints sit while their dogs are still growing or some of the psychiatric tasks that requires a dog to be in tune with their handler's mental or emotional health those are really what's called advanced tasks that really should wait until the dog's more mentally mature even if say a five month old puppy appears to be tasking for your anxiety or for uh disassociation okay well that's good but at the same time that's not something that you should concentrate on while they're that young because you know dogs will naturally try to comfort whenever their whenever their handlers are having issues but that does not mean that it is healthy mentally or emotionally for them to then be expected to do that as a job um, that is much like back a hundred years ago children would be expected to go and work in the tobacco fields with their parents during the summer that was something that they could do but it did not help their mentality and their emotional health to mature. So again, just because 
a dog or a child can do something doesn't mean that they should do something. And off-leash work is no different. Yes, our dogs should be able to be able to walk out of the house if we're in the middle of a fire and we can't grab our leashes and all of our gear. Um, but that, again, doesn't mean that they should be expected to do that every time you walk out of the house. Just like a dog should not have to always have the prong or always have the e-collar or always have the head halter in order for the dog to work as a fully trained service dog. But uh, those tools do help even fully mature service dogs because they're not robots. And, you know, we, we constantly say that uh, to try to explain why we should not completely blacklist somebody for the random mistake. But if that dog is off leash, whenever it's still young or still training, then whenever that dog becomes a not robot, the stakes go up much higher. So that is why working a dog off leash is very gray whenever it comes to going to court um and again this could be like if uh if i in general came across another team and both of our dogs were off leash and both of us are going to um basically sue one another for damages well then it comes down to Okay, well, both of your dogs were off-leash. Did you both need them off-leash? And that would be whenever I would have to actually go in and prove that there was no other viable option. The leash would not be an option. Whether it be hands-free or um, a long line. Um, you know... Now, he is always on his e-collar, which that's an electronic leash legally does count as a leash um, when another leash is not viable. So, that does show that I have that option. Sorry, I'm cleaning up after general. Anyway, uh, so yeah, basically whenever it comes down to whether or not your dog should be working off leash... The court issue is something that really should be thrown in there whenever you are considering. Because again, you're going to have to be able to prove without a doubt, 100%, that there's no other viable option. And if you can't do that, then a judge is not going to find in your favor. Um... And even, even if you do prove 100%, you might end up drawing a judge that will see things differently. Uh, because, you know, they're not medical professionals, they're legal professionals. So, uh, always balance the medical aspects of what you need your service dog to do with the legal aspects of what your service dog legally is allowed to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go now. Uh, this is a little bit longer video than I planned. But, uh, so for right now, that's about it. Uh, if you have more questions, feel free. Send me messages. In, in, uh, DM me. And, um, and if you're close by, I'll even meet up with you so that we can actually, uh, speak one-on-one. -on -one. And for those of you who are in North Carolina, feel free to look up the page, uh, Service Dogs of North Carolina. I do uh, try to plan some meetups every so often so that our dogs can um, practice working around other people and other dogs. Uh, because if a dog only trains around dogs that it knows, they do tend to get a pack mentality, so being able to work around the dogs that they know is not really a good judge on whether or not they are good to be able to work around any other service dog that they may come, come across 
while in public. So, um, you know, remember the goal is if the two of us got on a plane, my dog and your dog should be able to sit side by side and do their job and not interfere with one another. So uh, if your dog can't do that, then that means that they need a little bit more practice around dogs that they don't know. So until then, until next time, I will uh, let you go and have a blessed day.